tether the fork, we gonna tether the fork, the mother sucker. Tether the fork, the sucker. I tether the fork, we gonna tether the fork, the mother sucker. Tether the fork, the sucker. I tether the fork, we gonna tether the fork, the mother sucker. Tether the fork, the sucker. I tether the fork, we gonna tether the fork, the mother sucker. one right here. Subject, our co-worker has a problem with body odor. Dear Stephen Shirley, for quite some time now, I and some of my female black co-workers have been discussing a very delicate problem. We're all women in our 50s who thought we could deal with just about anything. However, a little over a year ago, we got a new co-worker, also a black female, who has a severe problem with personal hygiene. She wears unkept clothes that cling to her in the most unflattering way, dirty sneakers and stretched out slouch socks. Her hair needs to be at the very least washed and combed uh, we've given up on her using a straightening comb or getting a perm or well-maintained natural hairstyle in parentheses last but not least and to add insult to injury she has unpleasant body odors some days it smells like urine and some days it smells like an unbathed woman uh, <laughs> at certain times of the month. We have discussed over and over various possible ways to talk to her about this. We feel embarrassed for her and want to approach her before one of our white co-workers decides to do so. We feel strongly that this should come from one of us. This woman is in her 40s, is quite intelligent, has a wonderfully pleasant personality, speaks articulately, and she possesses an obvious natural beauty under all of that negative stuff. Please help us, Stephen Shirley. We don't don't know how to proceed in a kind and gentle way. I would even be willing to take her shopping for several decent outfits suitable for working in our professional high-profile office. Sincerely, concerned co-workers. Wow. Uh, uh, well concerned co-workers um you're right this is a tough call you know especially if you want to be gentle and delicate about it um you know i feel bad that you have to both smell her and tell her but you got to do it i mean you absolutely have to do it why should you have to come to work and be subjected to this uh sometimes you know if people don't know they just don't know i mean everybody just wasn't taught these things okay they just were not um i, I suggest you and your group of uh ladies at work maybe take her to lunch and then just talk to her just get it out i mean tell her you don't want to hurt her feelings but it's it's a problem it's a problem all through the office and actually tell her that she needs uh to wash and you know suggest that you take her shopping that you would but you know just tell her you're not trying to hurt her feelings it is it is hard but you got to do it 12 minutes after we'll be no that ain't what i see <laughs> i know you don't uh, well i'm going <laughs> hey let me tell y'all so my suggestions? answer is going a whole nother way right here Ooh. We know that. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. No, no. Share the answer the letter. I'm just responding. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let me read this ignorant letter right. Our co-worker has a problem with body odor. Why are we writing the letter then? Dear Steve and Shirley, for quite some time now, I and some of my female black co-workers have been discussing a very delicate problem. We are all women in our 50s who thought we could deal with just about anything. However, a little over a year ago, we got a new co-worker, also a black female, who has a severe problem with personal hygiene. She wears unkept clothes that cling to her in the most unflattering way. Dirty sneakers, stretched out slouch socks. Her hair needs to be, at the very least, washed and combed. <sighs> We've given up on her using a straightening comb or getting a perm or a well-maintained natural hairstyle. Last but not least, and to add insult to injury, she has unpleasant body odor. Some days it smells like urine, and some days it smells like unbathed woman due at a certain time of the month. We have discussed over and over various possible ways to talk to her about this. We feel embarrassed for her and want to approach her before one of our white co-workers decides to do so. Okay. We feel strongly that this should come from one of us. This woman is in her 40s, is quite intelligent, has a wonderfully pleasant personality, speaks mm -hmm. articulately, and she possesses an obvious natural beauty under all that negative stuff. Please help us, Steve and Shirley. We don't know how to proceed in a kind and gentle way. I would be willing to take her shopping for several decent outfits suitable for working in our professional high-profile office. Sincerely, concerned co-worker. Go for it. Uh-oh. Well, concerned co-worker. Yes. 
I appreciate your concern, and you women up there in your 50s obviously are dignified ladies and, and very proud of yourself. And, and But you are dealing with an issue here that has uh, fallen several people. Now, I'll tell you what the main issue is. You as African-American women feel responsible for the other African-American women. And that's a good thing. But you're concerned about her because you also know, as we all do, that for some reason there's a rule where this woman cast a bad light on the rest of you. Mm -hmm. You don't want this woman to cast a bad light on the rest of you because you consider her one of us. That's a noble way to look at it, and that's beautiful and everything, but you have a problem, though. Because homegirl coming in here looking straight crazy. <laughs> Hair all over her head, ain't got a perm, won't get a beautiful natural style, won't lock it, and do nothing. She won't nothing. Cornrow it, something. Just get it in some order. Pick that dirt out your hair, something. Now she got clothes clinging to her in an unseemly way. That means her clothes is laying in places that ain't got no business places, and you can see body prints that you uncomfortable seeing. Yeah, jeez. Don't nobody want to <laughs> see your drawers under your dress. Don't nobody want to see this big imprint in the front in front of you, and now we can see the design, size, shape, and all this. It don't nobody want to see that. Now, to top it off, she got an unpleasant body over. Breast showing, <laughs> hair bumps round the breast, oh, hey. rings on her. You don't, you ain't need to what? know all this. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what? Hey. what? <laughs> but now she got to unplay. Some days it smells like urine. Well, uh. depending on what kind of urine it is. No, it doesn't. Oh. And if it's baby urine, it's okay from a three month old. <laughs> But if it's grown man urine, oh, if it's girl, I'm an girl. adult urine, now we got a problem. <laughs> well, I'm going to just explain something to you. Let me help you out, Steve Harvey style. I hope you listen to Shirley answer, because I ain't got none of that for you. <laughs> Here's the letter that I found. We feel embarrassed for her and want to approach her before one of our white co-workers decides to do so. Mm. I'll say... Let the white people handle it. There you go. With See, mind. now here we go. <laughs> yes. See, because you got to let white people do some things for you. Huh? Because I like their approach sometimes. I actually like to see them go off because their voice elevates <laughs> and they have phrases that make you think something's really wrong here. Because you let them keep passing by a big girl over there. Smelling all that gorilla urine and 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 and, 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 that, and that rhino that smell like you down at the zoo. One of them white folk gonna snap. And this one, ah! Father God! See, they have phrases that they use that let you know are something really wrong. For crying out loud! Ralph, for yes. Pete's sake! Holy fart! <laughs> you know, they don't find it like that. What? Fly like what? an eagle! She whiz! What is going on? Lady, I gotta tell you, my blue eyes are crying! <laughs> <laughs> oh, blue eyes. Somebody gonna walk past the girl and go, Jiminy Crickets! <laughs> I'm telling you, I love to hear their phrases, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm having an Elvis Presley moment here. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. I'm telling you. You gotta let white folks handle it sometimes. Oh, oh God, I seen fur and I seen rain. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> My lord! What a magnolene! <laughs> God, if Gandhi were here, what would he do? <laughs> Break. <laughs> oh, man. Ralph, you okay? You, I passed by you and scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> The but Jesus. What is that? I never uh, they knew. don't know either. It's just a phrase. <laughs> I just love it when they go. Oh, yeah.